Hey guys, it's CarGuy11. Join me for this very interesting uncovered view of the C8, including at the end, a discussion with an engineer. Okay, this is the awesome cutaway of the C8 Corvette. And as you can see, it is aluminum construction still, just like the C7, but it does have this huge center uh, tunnel there for structure, and that is why your center console is not that deep in the C8, surprisingly. I uh, was kind of expecting a nice deep console with that mid-engine, but they still use that for structure, it looks like. And uh, this is just uh, the composite body there. The front end, the front end has, again, a lot of uh, tubular uh, aluminum construction, cast aluminum for the suspension bits, and we do have some steel for the anti-roll bar. We have a cooler up here. Not exactly sure if that's engine or transmission. Now the brakes on the Z51 here are not slotted like the C7, but I guess that's due to not having as much weight up front. The dash um, cowl is half magnesium now. I think that's new. I'm not 100% sure on the C8. And here you have the side sills, high strength aluminum all the way down. And of course, now we want to head back to the mid engine. All right, here we have the cutaway of the rear end of the C8. And another very cool view. You can see the exhaust system here. We have two cats instead of four on the C7. Two big cats. And it comes down to the exhaust here. And, and then, of course, the controversial outlets on the sides. Because they had to do that for packaging reasons. Less, uh, I'm sure some aftermarkets are going to have uh, straight through here. <laughs> Uh, no muffler, which uh, would sound awesome, I, I think. But yeah, that's why they couldn't do that center exhaust, at least for the um, singer. But you could see how the transmission extends to the rear, behind the axle line. The axles are right there. And then you have the air intake which I'm assuming is plumbed from the side of the vehicle, but it comes around large air filter right to the back of the engine here. So it's really like the engine is uh, flipped around uh, 180 degrees from the C7. Uh, got the oil cooler right there on top for that dual clutch. All aluminum construction here for the uh, strut tower brace. I really like how the new engine cover looks. Much, much better than the C7. Tubular headers. And then we do have uh, coolers on the sides at the air intake. I'm not sure if those are for uh, uh, oil or uh, differential, probably the, the rear diff, the rear diff is the electronic again, and another cooler on this side, could be for trans, uh, pretty cool, pretty cool to see this cutaway. Alright, let's take a look now at the new LT2 engine, based on the LT1 and the current C7 Stingray. And as we see here, 495 horsepower, 470 pound-feet of torque. Still maintains that 11.5 to 1 compression ratio. And as you can see right up front here is that huge oil baffling system. That is the dry sump oil system, which is different from the C7. Uh, it's mounted on the engine instead of on the side of the engine on the C7. And as you can see over here... Uh, looks like the intake is changed, um, and of course the engine cover itself looks much better now. 
I like the color bow covers. And uh, it still maintains the variable uh, cam timing. As you can see here, uh, change over there. Um, cam and block, of course. Direct injected still. But they did not do the port injection like the ZR1 C7. Uh, one definite improvement is tubular headers. Stainless steel this time, not the cast iron that's in the C7. And look at this uh, plug uh, design. The uh, coils are not on top of the plugs. They are on the side of the engine. That's, that's interesting. I haven't seen that before. Uh, of course, you got your huge air inlet on top. Electronic throttle, of course. Here's your high prom fuel system. Mechanical, of course. Now, this is an interesting uh, flywheel design with a spring. I don't know if I've seen that one. Uh, dual mass flywheel, maybe. Is that what that's called? Uh, oil filters at the bottom of the engine, and there is an oil cooler right underneath as well. Here's the uh, plug, direct injector, and your intake valve there. Yep, here's all more of those ignition coils on the side of the engine. Maybe that's for heat as well. Probably for space, because, well, with the headers right here, that's probably why. But, um, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool cutaway of the new LT2. All right, guys, this is the Tremec 8-speed dual-clutch transmission in the C8. And first time getting a look at it in this cutaway. And as you can see here, all the clutches uh, in the front. And this is a wet clutch system, so that should help with durability. Uh, but you can see the mid-engine, the axles are right right at the uh, beginning of the transmission where the back houses all the gears. And it looks like a typical manual transmission shaft in the back area here. A uh, big oil cooler on top. And, oh, this is all their shifting mechanisms. Uh, solenoids, and you have uh, all of the veins there for the different pathways. Pretty neat. Let's hope it's reliable. And um, I don't know if this is an oil pump or a filter, but um, yeah, pretty neat to see this. Let's uh, go look at the rest. But it's electrically assisted, so there's no vacuum pump anymore. There's no vacuum booster anymore. Okay. And all the, uh, the assist in the brake system is done electronically. Uh, the pump and actuators inside the boost, uh, we call it the boost electronic brake system. How is the feel compared to... So we were paranoid about how to feel. The yeah. feel is good. The feel is really good. Um, and not only is it good, we can adjust the brake pump with modes. So we mode it so you can feel differences in the brakes. But feel like what? More pressure? Like how do you I would go from maybe softer to more responsive. You could call it snatchy. I mean, some like people grabbing. like some people yeah. like I personally don't like it. I like to be able to modulate more brakes, but it, it's the good thing is you can adjust it however you like with the car. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And then the strut suspension compared to the lead. Yeah. So we have for the first time in Corvette four quarter coil springs. And if you look at the axis of the spring coilover system, it's pointed right at the tire contact patch. Okay. It intersects at the at the ground. So there's no compromise in kinematics where you traditionally mount maybe more vertical spring and you're bending a lower control arm and you're putting side load on a spring. Yeah. This is a pure compression. Okay. Is this heavier than the composite leaf spring? Yes. Yeah. 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 Now here are the two tires. Uh, for base and C51. The base model actually gets an all-season tire for the C8, and that is the 18.3, I believe, and the Z51 gets the Pilot Sport 4S, the ones I use on my C7 currently. So, uh, pretty 
interesting change it did there with tires.